Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? Justin Hambach here back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. The big tutorial for Jason Richards' new single, Upside Down. Here we go! Jason Richardson, the Dark Souls of guitar playing, of shred guitar, has released a new single called Upside Down. If you didn't hear the new single yet, then I would recommend to check it out because it's super, super awesome, super, super shreddy. If you like, you can watch my cover that I did in under 20 hours as well, which was a lot of work, but hey, that was a lot of fun. I love those challenges, those covering new singles in under 24 hours and yeah as i promised this is a teaching channel here my passion is to teach guitar to get you to the next level and therefore i created of course a full lesson note for note lesson for the new single upside down by jason richardson I did hear every part from Jason, but not from Tim, because Tim has his own kind of tutorial video out there, go check it out. If you want the tabs for this video, usually you get free tabs on my channel, but we want to support Jason as good as we can. For supporting him, you could buy, for example, his tabs from his site. It's not much, it's like three bucks or something like that, go buy it. And even if you don't want to learn the song, go buy it. You can support an artist with that. Pre-order definitely the new record from Jason. I can't wait to get it in my hands. I'm really, really excited. Some new and refreshing shredding is awaiting us and some new challenges for me to learn. And Jason, playing Jason stuff, really believe me, it's quite a challenge, <laughs> but it's doable. And therefore I created this lessons to show you how you can play upside down. And I want to encourage you to play upside down and even just to try it, just, just try to learn it and just try to get something out of the song. If you want to support my channel, you can subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment or spread the word of this channel to all of your friends, guitar playing or not guitar playing. <laughs> and if you want to boost your picking to the next level and check out my online course, the Then of Speed Picking, link is in the description box as well as for the tabs for this video. All right, so much about that. I would say let's stop talking, let's start shredding and let's check out the song Upside Down by Jason Richardson, full note for note lesson. Here we go. Have a lot of fun, cheers and stay progress. Bye. Okay, first of all, let us start with the basics. We have a guitar which is tuned down to D standard, a seven string guitar. You're not really needing the seventh string, you only need it once or twice in a certain riff. But to play the crazy Apache part in the ending or the Tim Henson stuff and some of the melodies and the solos, you don't necessarily need a seventh string guitar. Even though this is a guitar which is tuned down to D standard, I will call every string and every note like it's regular tuned. So this will for me still be an E string otherwise than the note that you are hearing, which is a D. It's just made some things easier to understand. The basic chord progression that we have in this song is based around E minor, E minor 9, D major, C major, and going sometimes even to the B major or the B7 to get the dominant sound. So the song is kind of like a puzzle. We have some certain melodies, some certain pieces and riffs, and it's putting together really kind of randomly, no, not really randomly, but sometimes it's that riff with a different ending, and then, then it's that melody, and then it's that run, and stuff like that. So here in this video, we are going through the basic ideas, and then in the song, you can find out or figure out uh, where you should put those ideas, but it's when you once got an idea, it's pretty easy. So first off, we are starting with a big run in the beginning, kind of a big statement that Jason is setting here right in the beginning. And the run, mm, I played two notes less because of what I was hearing and transcribing. The actual run, like in the tabs, goes like this. So we're going just easily 
easily uh, through the E minor scale starting on the E here on the 21th fret of the A string and then we have the three note per string scale uh, all pretty basic But actually this is, I would say, in that kind of tempo, 128 BPM, 60 note triplets is one of the hardest things you can do in guitar playing. Just simply scales up and down because you have to switch the pick slanting on every string because on every string we have an uneven number of notes per string. So we have to change from upward pick slanting to downward, upward, downward, upward. And this can be really, really intense. Otherwise, when we are playing an even number of notes per string, like when we would double every string playing six notes, then we have an even number. And then we could keep the uh, then we could keep the pick slanting, which makes some stuff easier. But here, Jason decided to play those things up and down. And yeah, this is not really easy. <laughs> not on that tempo. I transcribed the lick like this, not starting on the root, but starting on the third here on the D string, the 17th fret. And doing a little position shift here and then going, oh sorry, descending. Um, but he is actually playing it from the root putting two notes more in it and it's not 16 note triplets, sorry, it's 16 note quintuplet. no, uh, seven tuplets. Hi, did it go? This is fast. And the next problem is the higher frets. I mean, it's really, really tough to get everything really nice and cleanly played up here, comparing to, I would say, an octave below. Um, so here I would recommend for working on your precision, um, something that I will recommend really often in this uh, song how you should practice it and here I would recommend to practice it like on full speed, full tempo, but not dividing the tempo in certain areas, divide the line in certain movements and areas. So I would for example recommend to play something like this. Those for the guys who are following me for a longer time now will know this method. It's something that I praise a lot. And then when we have one finger movement down, let's, let's continue to the next finger movement. And the next one. Up until we have it full, which is still pretty tricky. All right, now let's move on to the riff. And the riff is played in two versions, one octave high, one octave below. It's the same thing, just an octave below. Um, but first let's check out the riff an octave higher. Okay, this riff consists out of four bars. Let's check out each bar for its own, for itself. And the first bar goes again like this. And here we are first starting off with a low E string, going to the F sharp and the G, 40, 50 fret. Pulling back to the E. Then we're playing the A and the G. Now we're going to the A string, where we are pulling from the 14th fret the B to the low A. And then we have this pattern here. We're first outlining E minor, starting with the root, fifth, third, 14, 14, 15, and then C major starting on the fifth, uh, third, the 14th fret on the D string, the E, then the root, and fifth. And then playing B and C again on the A string. Now continuing to the next bar, which is really same kind of beginning. This one here. Here we are going straight back to the B, but the B is now an eight note, the rest is 60 notes, so we can rest a little bit longer on that note. And then we have again the F sharp, going to the low F sharp on the E string, going to the B. And then we have G, F sharp in the ending. So the end phrase of this bar goes like this. Then the next bar is the one with the D major as the major chord in that. And there we're starting off on the D. 
Ah, okay. Uh, one thing I forgot to tell you. It's not a guitar which is tuned in D standard. It's a guitar which is tuned in D standard with a low uh, dropped seventh string. So this one here is a G. And this is the reason why we have our D when we would see this one like a regular tuned seventh string with a low A string on the 17th fret. And here we are starting with that one as well and playing to get this rhythmical idea where we have first have a 60 note and then an 8 note like in the bar before. Now comes a little finger twist and I was thinking a lot about the right correct fingering to play this one first because we have to go from 17 to 15 on the ace, uh, E string and then from 17 to 17 on the E string pulling back to 15 and then going straight to the 14th fret on the um, D, uh, sorry, the A string, which means fourth finger position can be tricky with the pinky and the middle finger playing with each other. And especially for the jump between the 7th fret on the uh, low B and the E string on the 7th fret on the 6th fret. So I came up with this finger ring using the ring finger for the 17th fret on the 7th string, middle finger, and then we can ring pinky on the both 17th fret of the 7 and 6th string. Right, then we're continuing with the G now. And this is the cool thing about the melody of the riff, because we have a little melody here and there, which goes like E, F sharp, G. Here again, the same rhythmical idea like on the second bar, with the eight note, 60 note, eight note, 60 note. And here we're starting again with the G, going to the B. And then after we hit the G again, we're going to the low A string, B, 15th fret, the G, and the A on the 17th fret. Moving on to the next bar. Now the next bar is divided into two chords. Here we have the C first, and then in the other half, the B dominant, to have a dominant to go back to our root, the E again. And we're starting off with the C major kind of idea, and therefore we're playing this idea. 15 on the 7th fret, then 14th on the E string. Going up the scale, 14, 15, 17, back to 14. And now over the B dominant, we are outlining the dominant with the following idea. We are starting on the third, the um, D sharp, going to the seventh of the B dominant, the A, and back to the root. And this is the complete riff, the first riff. All right, let me try to play this one up to tempo. Something like that. Please keep in mind, I transcribed this riff a little bit differently, so I'm learning this one with this version right now with you together. <laughs> All right. Okay, now after that, we are playing the complete riff one octave below, going like this. Okay, now let's move on to the main melody. The main melody here I have in a different kind of fingering and position, but I've tried to get the phrasing as close as the one from Jason. And the main melody is actually pretty, pretty easy and pretty simply. The phrasing is kind of the hard thing here, uh, but it goes like this. Those three bars are the main element of the main melody, the basic core. And then sometimes he's doing the run that I've told in the beginning uh, as the fourth bar or in the beginning, 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 <laughs> the, uh, really in the start of the song, he's doing a phrase like this. So we are basically in the E minor pentatonic and we have the main upgoing melody which goes again like in the riffing again from the root note to the ninth to the minor third. And um, we are combining this idea with a pentatonic run where we're starting off on the root note going to the minor third, the fourth, the fifth and then I play here the root on the 17th set of the B string to make the the slide down, um, down to nowhere, basically. So it's just a quick uh, effect slide. 
Then I play the fourth again, minor sixth and fifth. Then we are going to the ninth. Going to the ninth, also an octave below on the eleventh fret on the G string, where we are doing a slide to the note. And resolving to the twelfth fret, the minor third. So now we're starting on the D, but also doing this little pentatonic idea. Resolving to the G. And then we're going back through the fifths again to the fourth, where we're doing this little swirl here. This little booty shaker on the fourth. Now, then the other melody that he's playing at the beginning goes like this. Again, we are starting off here with a C. Then we are hitting the dominant. We are playing from the dominant, seeing the major third, which is the minor seven from our root note. Um, outlining again in B dominant seven. So third, root, minor seven. But here we are going to the uh, minor six instead of the fifth from the B dominant seven. So it's kind of a B dominant seven with the uh, flat 13 in it. All right, and this was the main melody. Now there's a little extra bar uh, behind the riff, our basic main riff, um, uh, when we are playing on the octave higher. And in the end he's expanding the last bar to this idea. And here we have a pretty interesting run, melodic-wise, or harmony-wise. We're starting off on the C, which is the um, minor 6 from our B from our B dominant 7, but he's some sort of playing of whole tone scale with a C sharp in it, but resolving again to the B dominant after that. So this little moment, this little one note here, which is not the flat 9, but instead the sharp, uh, not the sharp 9, the regular 9, and herefore we are creating this kind of whole tone sound. But he instantly resolves into this inversion from the B dominant 7. Sliding now, going from the 9th fret on the D string to the 11th uh, fret, sliding to 13 and resolving into the 14th fret of the G string. So we are now going to the verse and the main problem with the verse is that we have a lot of layers. Some melodies are harmonized, then we have the chunking part in between that. In the second verse I would say the chunking part is a little bit more on the focus but I've played the melody and when it comes to the melody I've some sort made a mix out of sometimes using the higher register, sometimes losing the lower register here and um, you will see this while I describing uh, the way how I choose which melody is a little bit more important to have it more the focus in the cover because I'm just one guitar player I cannot do play two guitars at the same time but you will see what I mean when you're checking the tabs together with this video all right first we are starting with this kind of rhythmical idea This was the easy part. Now we're getting a little bit more interesting. Up next we have this pretty pretty cool phrase here. Where we're first starting on the F sharp and on the G string 11th fret. Hammering from our middle finger to the ring finger to the G, the minor third. Going to the root. Ah, not the root, sorry, the uh, C. Then here we are going to the A with our pinky. This is why I choose the middle finger and the ring finger for this one to have the stretch to get the pinky really smoothly into the 14th fret of the G string. Then we're sliding with our index from 10 to 9 on the D string and with my middle finger on the B string from 10 to 12. Next phrase. Here we are outlining a D major chord starting on the 5th, going to the 6th the major third, 
resolving into the fourth with our pinky, going to the root, and then again six, fifths, and then that basic major shape here. Here I should maybe mention now that uh, Jason Richardson is not doing the roll technique. I do the roll technique and I would recommend to practice the roll technique. It's really important, I would say, for sweep picking. And the technique that Jason is doing has a purpose, but I think for most of us guitar players it's not really recommendable. Up next we have that easy but pretty cool melody which goes like this. Then we have this big stretch here, <laughs> this pretty cool chord, which is basically this melody here, but plays as a chunk interval or chunk kind of chord idea. And Jason is using this shape here, which is not really easy. 10th fret on the, with the index on the E string, then in 13th fret on the B string with the ring finger, 16th fret on the G string with the pinky, and 12th fret with our middle finger. I've played it like this, doing the tapping on the 12th fret. It was a little bit easier in, I would say, playing it in flow and in shape. And this shape, it's, I should practice this one a little bit more, but you can do that as well with the tapping here. And then we have again another pretty cool rhythmical idea, this one here. The last two notes, the 7th and the 9th on the D string, I played in my cover here. I would not recommend doing this because it's easier to get to the E, which is important for the phrase after that, which goes like this. And here we are starting, as I've said, with the E on the A string, then we're going to the G. Sliding to the F sharp, resolving to the D, going to the B, we're on the D string, on the C, and then first we're resolving again to B, playing it six times, and then to the A. I oh, know we're playing it ten times, isn't it? Or... Wait, let me check real quickly. Eins, zwei, acht. Yes, ten times. I really like this melody. It's catchy, it's melodic, but still rhythmically really interesting and from the phrasing as well. After that we have this melody. When we're first playing B, Doing a little swill, hammer, pull off kind of fancy phrasing technique here to the C, back to the A, and then resolving from the B to the D. Going to the F sharp and going to the D sharp. Probably to outline again the B minor, dom uh, B dominant 7. Now we have this little melody. And we're first starting on the E, bending to the F sharp, then going to the G, and then we're playing D sharp, um, what's the C, and E G. So this could probably be, e, be in E flat, and all of this is in C minor. But I think this still comes from the uh, B dominant 7 kind of perspective, so this would be a little bit more like D sharp. C and G. So seeing this from the B, it would be the major third, flat 9 and flat 13. Now comes the first shreddy part, which goes like this. Here we are playing first the A, then D, 20 seconds fret on the E string, going to the G, which was the 20, oh, this is, yeah, it's a G, uh, 20, 20 fret on the E string going back to the A and then we're sliding to the G and then we're playing this kind of power chord here and try to get this shape really under your finger because you will need this later on a lot. So again, then after we've played this shape here we're sliding 
to the 14th fret where we're again playing the shape. And then we're sliding to the 11th fret where we're resolving into 12, going octave higher from 14 to 15. And now comes a real shreddy bit. <laughs> now comes the first crazy sweep section, uh, which goes like this. Okay, here we're first starting off with the E minor. Playing hammer on from the E to the G. Then I switch from my index finger to the 12th fret, because then we have this kind of sweep phrase, which is really inspired by players like Frank and Bali. Then we're starting 12, 12, sweeping from the D to the F, from the A to the D string. Then we're playing um, the minor third to the uh, second, so in frets we have 17 to 16. Then playing the same idea 14, 17, 16 on the G string. And we're sweeping from the 14th fret, the last note of the D string, to the G string. The rest on the D string is alternate picking, so in total we have economy picking. Then we're going on the B string, uh, where we're playing 15, uh, what's this, 20, 19, and then going to the 17th fret on the E string. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Hoppala. Then when we have reached the 17th fret on the E string, we have a four note per string phrase. Sorry, really tricky because of the yeah the small frets here. Going from 17 to 22 to 20 to 19, and then we're jumping to the B string 17th fret and sliding to the 16th fret. And oh boy, this move, Jason, why did you do this? This was really really oh really uncommon, unfamiliar to play something like. Oh, I hate, still hate it. This line is an absolute bitch. Uh, I would recommend to practice this one as well with taking the line because basically it's it's not that hard to play this one on one string, um, but try to practice especially the jump from the E to the B string. Just, this is a hard section. With the right picking. You see, still for me, it's still an absolute bitch. Uh. And then with the slide together. Okay, after that we are playing um, minor third and uh, second on the 20th and 19th fret, going to the fifth on the second, 16th fret on the G string, resolving to oh wait a second, real right. It's right. And then when we have slide from the 16th fret to the 14th fret, we're going to the 17th fret on the G string and resolving to the 13th fret of the D string. <laughs> I will dare not to play this fast. I've tried it like hours and hours and hours when I was recording it. And then I, one time I hit it nearly, mm, 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 kind of the way that Jason is playing it. Okay, okay, okay. I, now I have to take this take and uh, never play this one again. <laughs> All right, after that, everything from the verse repeats instead of the last lick. There, in the second time, he plays, luckily, a little bit easier lick, which goes like this. All right, and here it's basically an E minor uh, sweep arpeggio, five string shape. Then we're going to the A on the 17th fret on the E string, and then resolving back up again with the tap tapping on the 30, 32nd fret. But I will not or won't do this in the cover because we have to jump after that right to the main melody. So it's a little bit easier just to play. Okay, now after the Tim Hansen solo, we are playing the melody again and the riff again, the chunking again, and then we have a transition to the that part, the dance part. And it goes like this. We're first playing the E. He makes a little dive bump with his bar. And then comes this melody.
where we have our root, going to the major 7, the 5th, ah, minus 6, sorry, and the 4th. Again, 8th fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, root, <laughs> major 7, sorry, <laughs> minus 6, and 4th. And then again, the big open chord. And then we are moving into E major, into my favorite part of this song, the that part. Who is that, you might ask? Well, good question. Uh, I know the DJ that from Jason Richardson, who have covered his um, song Addicted to Memory, which is a really awesome song, by the way. And before that and after that, I never really had that on my radar and really don't know who he is, but he seems to be one of the biggest DJs in the world and he seems to be German and I don't knew that that one of the biggest DJs worldwide who has played the Super Bowl this year and stuff like that is a German well das wusste ich jetzt auch nicht wieder was dazu gelernt so uh, let's continue with the part um, here we have basically um, again a mixture out of E major with a little bit in C major in between that to get this um, major, yeah, major mm, flat 13 kind of sound, this kind of chord progression here with the This kind of Mixolydian flat 13 kind of vibe, which is pretty awesome when I love this kind of sound. And mm, we have a lot of crazy jumps in here, a lot of crazy sweeps, a lot of crazy fingerings. So yeah, I hope you got warmed up good because now it's getting really, really hard. <laughs> All right, let's go. First, let me play this one slow. All right, first off, we have this E major kind of power chord shape here. Where well, we're going from 19 with our pinky to open E string and then 14, 16, 17, 19 across the last four strings. Luckily, there's a video of Jason playing that uh, in his studio documentary from the new record, which I highly can wait. And um, there you can really check how um, yeah, the fingering and all the notes really helped for me to for transcribing uh, yeah, the song. So, and in fact, this was actually the first part that I have transcribed because it's so much fun and it's so hard. So I knew right from the beginning, oh damn, you will need the most amount of time on this section. So you better start with this one. All right, after that, we're going from uh, B to the F sharp, playing now this line. We're starting with a power chord shape, and then we're going to the major seven, the D sharp, the fifth, ninth fret on the E string, and playing again 16, 17, 16 on the B string. Now Jason is doing this from the fingering with the middle finger, but for me, I it was kind of harder to do it with the middle finger. It sometimes could be a little bit more exhausting to do it with the index finger, but overall, in general, for me, it was easier to do it with the index finger. Sorry? This one was the right way. So we have... Oh, sorry, no, in the end he's going to the 16th fret on the G string. Not the 16th fret on the B string, so it's... This one here. Ooh, sorry! All right, then we're moving uh, to the next one. Here we, have first no uh, here we have two notes on the E string. B and F uh, G sharp. Then we are outlining this E major shape here, so keep this fingering here in mind, it's really important. We're starting off with the E major triad, going from 14 D string, 13, 16 G string to 12 on the B string. Going to the major 7, now we're playing the third, the root, Going to the fifth with our ring finger because after that we have to go to the eleventh fret on the G string with our index finger. Then we're going again to the major seven with our pinky. 
index moves to the 14th fret on the D string, the fifth, uh, sorry, the root note, and then resolving to the fifth. So we have. And this one, oh, it took me a long time to get this one under the finger. Especially this shape here. Oh, this took me so long to get this one right from the right hand, from the picking pattern, and up to tempo, and clean and everything. And I'm still struggling with it. So now it gets a little bit easier. We're first outlining a power chord. Like this, starting on the 12th fret, pulling to the 0 fret. Then we have 14, 14 on the uh, A and T string. And uh, 12 on the B string and 19, 17 on the B string. So we have root, fifths, root, fifths, root. Then we are outlining B major. Well, we're first starting here on the D sharp, or the um, yeah, the D sharp, which is the uh, third of B major. Then we have the B again, the D sharp, and the B again, resolving again to the D sharp. So it's a B it's a major with no fifths. This one coming from this C shape here, when you want to think it in cage system. And then we're moving this one half step up to get the C major, which gets us to the kind of mixolinian flat 13, major flat 13 kind of vibe and sound. And yeah, so let me play this section again. Up to the C especially the lower register of the C, this one is the main riff. It repeats. Now the next bar is often some variations out of it and we are now taking a deeper look into those variations. The first one goes like this. Pretty weird but it's awesome played fast. We're first starting again coming from the C major playing C, E, then F sharp, the uh, major fourth, the uh, not the major fourth, the uh, yeah, the Lydian fourth, the sharp eleven uh, uh, of um, um, of C major, going through the A to the G sharp. More kind of outlining now a D major shape, D major Lydian. Then going to the B, we're first outlining this idea, B, E, and B again, which leads us to this idea, B, E, A, resolving to the G sharp. This one is note in, uh, this next section is played with triplets, with 16 triplets, and here we have a sweep pattern, with a slide in it. And the next pattern, the next shape goes like this, 19, 17, 15 on the uh, G, uh, D and A string. The next sweep pattern, we also have to slide to the 14th fret. So we have two sweep patterns, this one here and this one here, with a slide one step below um, after the last note. To get the transition between those two shapes right, I've practiced the first shape and then the first note of the second shape. So like this and then moving on and we're resolving this line or we're ending this line with 19, 14 on the D string and 17 fret on the G string where we're after that going back to what not <laughs> all right again Something like this. Crazy madness. Alright, and here we are first starting off with an E major triad. 
starting 19, 16, 17, 16, which we are sweeping, to the 13th fret, and then we are going to the major 7 of E, the 16th fret with our pinky, going back 13, resolving to the E, and then we are outlining C augmented, where we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 8, going to C, uh, sorry, from the C to B, where we are playing B major. Just a simple major thread, resolving to E and going back to the D sharp. So again, E major, C augmented, B major. Now here, keep in mind the rhythmic. Uh, now here, keep in mind the rhythm. It's something again with step tablets. I didn't. I didn't get the rhythm really, really well uh, in the cover because I was always too fast with the B major sweep. There was always some space in between left, uh, which I used to get back to this idea. But I'm not really know. I'm not really sure what I did wrong there. I really had to analyze this a little bit more. All right, those are the two fill-ins. Now we have this little solo section before the complete dance part really mm, starts. The build up to the dance part. So let's check out this little solo. Okay, the coolest thing with this solo, it's note for note the same solo that Jason was playing in his cover video from that Z Addicted to Memory uh, song. And he just transferred it into his kind of homage to that. And it goes like this slow. Alright, and first off we are outlining a lot again in E minor, again with all this kind of um, power chord ideas that we have over three strings. And first off we have this E minor power chord, really basically 12, 14, 14, 14. Then we're going to an inversion of that and building it up ascending up to the B string. Sorry again. Here I pick everything, no sweeping allowed. Sweeping is later in the last bar of it, but here it's all alternate picking. Then we're moving this one up the scale. So we have this shape and compared to the scale, this shape, 19, 17, 16. Again, this shape, 20, 19, 17. So we're sliding back to the E shape and playing it again as a four note phrase. Then we're jumping to the next string set, the G, B and E string set, where we're playing this inversion here, 19, 17, 16, going three steps higher, three frets higher, sorry, to 22, 20 and 19. Then we're starting to 24, 19, then we're jumping string skipping to the G string where we have 21, and then we have this melody here. Oh, I love this build up. Just 29, uh, 21, 24, and sorry, 19, <laughs> now I've got it, 19, 24, and 21 on the G string. So again, Now comes the big sweep section. And here we're starting off again with um, economy picking, playing 19, 17, 16 on the E string. Going, uh, through going through sweeps from the 17th fret on the B string to the 19th fret on the G string. Outlining some sort of E major sweep but with the fourth and the what is this the minor uh, third and uh, the minor six in it because on the G string we are also playing 19 17 16 and we are outlining E major 
again as a sweep. So we have 18 on the D, 19 on the A string, going to the minor 6 again, resolving to the fifths. And then we are just simply playing the uh, major third, the G sharp, and playing this typical normal sweep shape. Six string sweep. Going up to the 24th fret where he is doing a flutter. <laughs> I don't because I don't have a worry bar. Yeah, something like that. All right, the Mexican part, the me Mexican standoff. <laughs> so the chord progression here is E minor, A minor, E minor and B dominant. All right, and uh, I've played this one completely wrong. Yeah, not really wrong, but with a really strange fingering or different fingering. I will now teach you the way how Jason did it, but I will do it bar for bar. So don't expect me to play this one in a row, uh, because I don't know how to play this one in a row, because I have my way, but I want to teach you the way from Jason. It's a little bit more correct. Okay, the first bar slow goes like this. And here we're starting off with this E minor 9 shape. Then we're going to the 7th here, doing a pull off to the 8th fret and the 7th fret again. Then we're going to the 5th here on the 9th fret of the D string, playing the minor 3rd and the 2nd, uh, 7th uh, fret and 8th fret as a thriller, triplet note thriller. Then sliding to the 4th fret on the G, uh, B string and outlining this A minor for shattering the next chord, 7, 5 and 0. Alright, the next bar we are starting with A minor 9, going from the minor 3rd to the 4th, playing the 7, major 6, going here to the minor 3rd again, sliding from the 6th to the 5th, Going to the flat 9, going to the flat 5th, uh, the uh, diminished 5th, and then we're playing this idea, 6, 4, 0, from the A string to the D string to the G string. Alright, and... In the next bar we have the first bar again and then the first fourth bar goes like this. Now here we have something really really eternal kind of uh, cacophony sounding and I couldn't figure out which kind of harmony this is. It's over the dominant section of course but relevant to the dominant it's kind of with the major third with the minor third with the flat nine, a little bit of auto red, so really crazy stuff going on here and we're starting off with this shape, 8, 10, 11, 12 and 9 on the G string. After the 9th fret on the G string we're hammering to 10, going to 11 and then from the 9th fret on the G string we're sliding back to 7, going to 10 on the G string, uh, sorry on the A string, sliding from 7 to 5, going to 9 on the D string and then we are playing this idea 6, 7 and low, uh, low open B string. 6 on the A fret, 6 fret on the A string, 7 fret on the D string and open B string. So and in the repetition the fourth bar, the second fourth bar, he is doing some really really speedy stuff and I was mm, transcribing it like this. That's just bullshit. He is, he is playing uh, four different shapes and 16 note treblets, always with starting with a um, high E string and I think from the picking pattern he is doing uh, hammer on from nowhere, which some people nowadays call some something picking, irregular picking, I don't know, it's bullshit. Those are hammer-ons from nowhere. When you're hammering from nowhere and you're picking another note, it's the same one from nowhere. All right, so let's check out those shapes. First, we have this shape here, seven, eight, seven. Going to the eighth fret on the low E string. 
So I think it's, I, so I assume it's played something like this. Then he's playing four, four, five, five, four, four on the B and on the G string. Five on the D string, going to the fifth fret on the E string. And we are moving up the fret, going now to B major, zero, seven, eight, nine, seven. And then in the end we have this inversion of B7, where we're going zero, 12, 11, 13, and 11 again. So this one comes as well from B minor seven. This one is from B augmented. This is from B major, and this is also from B major. Right, this is the Mexican section. <laughs> 